Welcome to All Things Cardio-Oncology. My name is Steve Caselli. I'm the Executive Director of ICOS. And in this podcast, you'll hear from a diverse representation from our community. We want you to be both informed and inspired by their stories and experiences, and we're so glad that you've joined us today. This episode was recorded uh, in person and live, and so there may be a little background noise, but other than that, we know you're going to really enjoy this episode. This is Steve Caselli. I'm the Executive Director of ICOS, and I am here at the American College of Cardio and Cardio, cardiology, not cardio oncology, society meeting, and I'm here with one of our international chapter leaders, uh, Carlos Trans. Trun- Trun- I'm going to let you say it. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I will. You say. Don't it. bother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, Carlos, we met at uh, our meeting in Toronto. Uh, Toronto. And I was surprised that you were there all the way from Latvia. And then after that meeting, we uh, talked and ended up starting a chapter of ICOS in Latvia. So it's such a pleasure to see you again. And we want to hear a little bit about, of an update about what's going on in Latvia. But first, maybe you could back up and just tell me a little bit about your personal history in cardio-oncology, how you got interested in the field, and then we can talk about the work that you're doing um, in the chapter there. Sure, sure. Yeah, my name is Karlis Drushinskis and I am a cardiologist from Riga, Latvia. I work in a Fall Studinch Clinical University Hospital and also for the University of Latvia. And um, yeah, how, how does it start for me? Uh, basically, uh, most likely it started from clinical practice seeing more and more patients in whom you really see those crossroads of cardiology and oncology Mm -hmm. in very also pretty primitive ways like for example you have patient with myocardial infarction which just developed in in in, uh, or acute coronary syndrome which just developed in department of oncology for example patients of uh, i don't know lymphoma before chemotherapy Mm -hmm. so questions about how to manage now that we should treat uh, my we should uh, also not not postpone much the treatment of uh, of oncology so So basically you're getting these referrals yeah basically Mm -hmm. this cooperation started on single patient uh, (laughs) individual patient basis basically that's how it started and then by every case you understand that instead of uh, doing it every time like uh, as a a unique case you probably need a system Mm. yeah and uh and that's that's how it started in in the in the very beginning the other thing uh, about being in Toronto, what I wanted really to be in Toronto because Toronto also has a large Latvian community which uh, okay. went there just before the Second World War okay. and also one of our most favorite ex-presidents of Latvia, Vairvich Freiberg, is from there. So ah. it's not like, but uh, I, I was amazed of the city and of people, but also, yes, uh, that at uh, that, uh, that meeting I felt this ambition that I had this urge that we need to do something like this and basically I don't think at that time I realized but uh, I had this intuition that it's going to be a coin with two sides mm. like one thing okay we are creating this Latvia chapter and which is good we are in, Involved, we have this uh, this uh, possibility to join the um, ICOS, but from other side, it also was um, like uh, no for us very important that we and which was actually the the most uh, challenging part to bring at the one table those opinion leaders mm-hmm. because when you can imagine opinion leaders in cardiology and in oncology, they are all very big. Yes. And then you need somehow to uh, to integrate this mm-hmm. thing, 
without you know because here everyone should be equal because you say I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm president of Icos Latvia chapter but I would say you know be careful uh, no no, beca <laughs> no I am yes. but let's say you know I'm more more like feel like uh, yeah. also coordinator not not uh, yes. uh, because uh, those are really big names which which sure. uh, I'm happy I brought together yep. and yeah and that's how we started and uh, now uh, interesting thing is because the, the main thing what we want to do basically uh, to cut the story to cut your uh, to cut your uh, podcast short <laughs> What we are thinking all, all the time about that, we are now having more and more therapies and more and more therapy options, which are potential cardiotoxicity, which, which has mm -hmm. uh, potential cardiotoxicity. But when, when uh, oncologists, oncologists fight for reimbursements, then basically those, uh, uh, not collateral, but those parallel uh, spendings for investigations of cardio echocardiography, biomarkers, I don't know, mm -hmm. MRI, uh, whatever. The, the, we are not speaking about them. And mm -hmm. basically what we want, first of all, to, to, st to show payer what proportion and uh, how will also increase the workload of cardiology if if we and what we really want to increase also survival of uh, cancer patients and and, and um, I would say that um, uh, from that perspective uh, our National Health Service has never spoke about that and that's something new a new angle also for them and uh, yeah the next thing what we started to do we, we, we would like to ask oncologists can you say please how many um, uh, immune therapy you have how checkpoint inhibitors how many that and how many this uh, good or bad we don't have good uh, registries right now mm -hmm. uh, why because we were uh, we were uh, we had hope for uh, 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 digital health systems right. which are not developed in time so we don't have uh, precise information but what we what, but where is where is the precise information precise information is holding those who are giving money for treatments <laughs> and that's how we now targeting this problem so we basically we started uh, discussion and uh, exchange with information with national health services who are payer for every every treatment mm -hmm. so they can provide those potentially cardiotoxic uh, treatments and we are now calculating how much and how it is going to increase the spendings of cardiology and also we have two programs for developing uh, for for uh, for cardiovascular disease and oncology disease, and in both programs, this cardio oncology program is uh, as a subspeciality or, or sub uh, uh, as a chapter in this uh, bigger plan for the next five seven years is in both uh, both uh, programs. That's great. I mean, it, it doesn't sound dissimilar to the United States, other countries facing very similar kinds of challenges. Um, in addition to, you know, sharing of data um, and then the f funding issues, are there, what other major challenges would you say you face in your country in particular? In, uh, in the cardio-oncology space, is it getting medications, is it technology, uh, is it? Yeah, I would say everything is improving, um, indeed improving also reimbursement for therapies uh, hemotherapy or tar target therapy or immune therapy uh, still of course not enough not enough money but mm -hmm. I believe we will always complain yeah. about that and also I think that's a, not just that's, yeah. that's, that's very universal. similar I yes. believe right so yes. that's if something unites us then yes. this complaints <laughs> about the lack of the money yes. so that's why that's why I don't want to complain about it right. because that's not very you know it's that's, that's totally not interesting <laughs> but uh, uh, no but still I, I think that um, uh, yeah I believe you know I don't think we will have cardio oncology clinics or, or because we have 
two big university hospitals which dealing with cancer patients. So basically, they uh, it's very easy to consult uh, mm -hmm. in a multi on multidisciplinary level every patient pretty much. It's easy to you bring it to bring it on. I think what what we are lacking is this um, uh, outpatient uh, outpatient care hmm. after the patient is discharged. Okay. Because now what we see how important is this also long term follow ups for right. those patients, not to forget about this cancer survivor after one year, three years, five years, seven years. Yeah. And uh, yeah, sadly, but also on my father's experience, I saw how many different situations one person, he was metastatic melanoma cancer survivor for 12 years. So I, with him, I saw how many different situations uh, one person can have right. in cardiology, yeah. and how you know you really need uh, mm -hmm. sound cardiologists to uh, to guide uh, mm -hmm. guide him through. Yep. And that's something what we want to improve. That it should not be the case that you need a sound physician, but that uh, <coughs> that it yeah. could be could be somehow guided uh, and then there is some system which not allowing to this person to to, yeah. to fall out uh, or, uh, and he's on the track yeah. and and and, and uh, going to the target do you have uh, survivor clinics like in the states we have no, not it, some of the larger cancer centers anyway they'll have survivor clinics where there's some scheduled regular plan for that follow up care yeah you see uh, i'm I would say, uh, you know, we have clinics today nearly for every disease, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm a little bit skeptic about that because mm -hmm. uh, my vision would be, uh, I would be, you know, more pro. I believe the, the truth is somewhere in between, but uh, I really believe that doctors also should expand their horizons, you know, like, no, like, like because, for example, if you are GP mm -hmm. and if you have one patient, uh, with metastatic melanoma and who you know lives on therapy no come on that's not chinese uh, abc yeah, yeah. that that you should learn you have as the gps they have much more difficult and complex situations where really which are really difficult yeah mm -hmm. but here we have guidelines which basically mm -hmm. tells you how to stratify the risk what to do at certain uh, time uh, windows and then at certain periods so I believe it's, it's not, no, I think that, uh, and also I think that uh, modern GP basically don't want to refer all the time patients right. somewhere. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, in my country, you see, because you no, know, we are a small country, mm -hmm. we're one and a one and half, one and eight, uh, thou, one and eight hundred uh, million people, inhabitants, so all GPs which, which need, they have my mobile number. Yeah. We are, uh, we are, uh, yeah, we are small country, so we are uh, 1,800 inhabitants, and uh, I think it's it, it works like that. It, <laughs> it works like that that uh, that basically. Yeah, GPs tend to uh, tend to keep their patients and tend to really be be their uh, family physicians. And, right. And uh, yeah. And uh, I think that's maybe an opposite question. Maybe we should do more in order to educate them and right. to increase yeah. their credit. No? Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, like like it's a, it's the same it, issue here. Yeah. We were constantly trying to figure mm. out how do we educate mm. the GP population better. And clinics, uh, because you see again in states, in, in one, you know, you sometimes you drive here, I don't know, three hours for to cardiologist right. and four hours to yeah. GP and or, or oncologist. But in Latvia, you don't. Yeah. You know, right, right, you most right. of the time you they are sitting, to, sitting somewhere yeah. pretty close. <laughs> right, you know? right, right. And then that's that's. Uh, so I think that you know, I don't think there is a one universal solution for everyone. Yeah. No, for for everyone. Yes. But um, yeah, I think if we put uh, the patient and his interests in the center, then I believe we cannot be mm -hmm. very wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Is there, um, what other plans do you have on the horizon for the near future in terms of 
moving forward in cardio oncology in your in your country? My secret uh, <laughs> plan, not plan, which is no longer secret. No, no. which is yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know. I would like to participate in a virtual hospital plan somewhere. I don't know. I saw. It curious about this idea because 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 I think patients want to solve their problems sitting on the couch they don't want they they, they, they want whatsapp and that's what they do sometimes yeah. they send you whatsapp lots of information they, they, they don't want to go to the doctor's right. office yeah. and I cannot say that because you know physicians are always telling we need to see the yeah. patient and we need to speak with him and so but patients don't want to. Lots of patients want to solve their problems sitting on the couch <laughs> or uh, yeah. near the computer. Yeah. And I think that sooner or later uh, we'll draw here. But that's um, apart from... <laughs> in cardio-oncology, you know, what, uh, what I think... Uh, no, not think, but what is our other direction would be the new physicians. Uh, and also, uh, uh, no, we'll try to create this interest mm -hmm. also within within physician society but also within fellows between yep. fellows and also of course uh, i also bought this book um, <laughs> uh, no this uh, icos uh, the, the certification board review book yes no <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm not sure i would pass <laughs> this exam <laughs> but um yeah. but still uh yeah, no, that's that's that would be that would be uh, the next thing also to spread this uh, idea and disseminate these ideas yeah. between uh, fellows and also because you know that's also you cannot uh, uh, you know you cannot um, how to say direct someone you know you yeah. really want to feel or to find people who are interested into this field sure and uh, that's not maybe happening every day and then uh, yeah that's why we're working on that and I believe our conferences together with oncologists also helps right. and, and we are getting more familiar each which each with other and, and yeah. Um, yeah that's great is there is there any cardio-oncology training in either oncology or cardiology fellowships no at this point no okay no yeah indeed no and that's uh, that's why that's why probably those cardio oncology conferences are so uh, mm -hmm. popular and uh, yeah. you, you always when we have cardio oncology topic we have in webinar 300 350 listeners wow. so that's yeah amazing. they they yeah, yeah it's popular because that's interesting people really see that uh, no you know you, you really see those two two kinds of patients oncology and and, and cardiology mm -hmm. and and uh, actually today you don't have patient with one diagnosis right you don't have them yeah it's the like you don't world. have like 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 clean hypertension right. patient <laughs> or elderly lymphoma patient no 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 they will yeah, have yeah. something yeah they will have something right and then as, sure. as soon as there are two or three conditions yeah then then mm -hmm. then you need to be physician yeah yeah well, it's great to, to catch up with you. I appreciate you taking the time. And it's interesting to hear, you know, the unique challenges you face that aren't really that unique. You know, they're <laughs> yeah. universal challenges. Yeah, yeah I can, they really I are. I can understand so, that. Too. Yeah. Well, I appreciate chatting with you. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. For more information about ICOS, you can go to ic-os.org where you'll find more information about all of our programs, including our weekly webinars, our board certification exam, and other resources that we know you'll find helpful. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope to hear from you soon.